Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's try to figure out how to determine the current in any one of the three branches if we have three parallel branches. Notice each of the parallel branches has an, an impedance Z1, Z2, and Z3, and a corresponding current I1, I2, and I3. And of course, the three currents should add up to the total current entering the circuit. So we can say that I, the total current, is equal to the sum of the three currents. So what we want to do is we want to use a method of proportionality. We can write the following. We can always compare any two currents with one another. For example, compare current 1 to current 2, current 1 to current 3, and current 2 to current 3. And we can say that the current in branch 1 is equal to the current in branch 2 divided by the ratio of the impedance in 2 divided by the impedance in 1. In other words, if the impedance in the second branch is twice the impedance in the first branch, that means that the current in the first branch will be twice the current in the second branch. That's what we call the concept of proportionality. And we can do that with any two branches. Another way of looking at it is, if the impedance in the second branch is three times the impedance in the first branch, then the current in the first branch will be three times the current in the second branch, and so forth. And so we can compare any two parallel circuits like that. It's a very handy process. And so here we now have three comparisons which we can now plug in here. We can plug in the equivalent current for I2 and we can plug in the equivalent current for I3 in terms of I2. So let's see here, how do we want to do that? Mm, let's see, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to compare, I'm going to replace I1 by this and I'm going to replace Oh, I think that's all I need to do. I1, I2, and I3. Hmm. Let me take a look and see what I did in the first place. So the way we want to employ this technique is we want to go ahead and substitute in our original equation everything but one of the currents. We want to end up with just one of the currents in terms of the total current and the impedances. So what I want to do is I want to replace I1 in terms of I3 and I want to replace I2 in terms of I3 and when I do that I get rid of I1, I get rid of I2 and I only have I3 in the equation and that's what I'm trying to get to. So let's go ahead and do that. So I can say that I, the total current is equal to I1 but I'm going to write I1 in terms of I3 so that becomes I3 times the ratio of Z3 divided by Z1 plus instead of I2 I'm going to write I3 times Z3 divided by Z2 and plus I3 I can leave that one alone that'll just give me I3. Now I can factor out an I3 so I can say that I is equal to I3 times and what we have left is Z3 over Z1 plus Z3 over Z2 plus 1 and now I'm going to write all that over a common denominator, which is Z1 times Z2. So I can write that I is equal to I3 times, here I'm missing a Z2, so that becomes Z2 times Z3 over Z1 times Z2. Uh, matter of fact, you know what, just to make it easier so that you can see what I'm doing, I'll just write three different fractions so you can actually see what I'm trying to do here. So this can be written as Z1 times Z2. Notice when I cancel the Z2s out, I end up with Z3 divided by Z1. Plus, here I'm missing a Z1, so I multiply both the top and the bottom of Z1, so we get Z1 times Z3 divided by uh, Z1 times Z2. And finally here, I have to multiply both times Z1 and Z2 divided by Z1 and Z2. Again, that's equal to 1. And now notice we have the common denominator, so we can write that I is equal to I3 times, in the numerator we end up with Z2, Z3 plus Z1, Z3 plus Z1, Z2, that's basically the product of every combination, divided by Z1 times Z2, that's a 1 here. And notice since we're solving for I3, not for total current, we can then write that I3 is equal to I times the inverse of all this, which can now be written as Z1, Z2 divided by Z2, Z3 plus Z1, Z3 plus Z1, Z2. 
And so that would be the equation we need, there we go, for I3. Then, as you see, the pattern, the denominators will always be the same, and the numerators will be the product of the impedances of the other two branches that, you don't, that you're not considering. So therefore, you can say that I2 is going to be equal to the total current I times, the numerator will be Z1 times Z3, the, two, the other two impedances divided by, and the denominator will be Z2, Z3, plus Z1, Z3, plus Z1, Z2, and then also I1 will be equal to the total current I times, the numerator will be Z2, Z3, divided by Z2, Z3, plus Z1, Z3, plus Z1, Z2, and there you have all three currents, I1, I2, and I3, in terms of the total current and the impedances when we have three parallel branches. And the interesting thing is it all came from simply realizing there was this proportionality of the currents between any two branches, which allows us to come up with equations like this for any number of branches, but at least here we see how it's used for three branches. And that's how it's done.